Good morning, folks. The sun is crackling. The earth was rumbling. We've got eye candy from James Webb, a great article by Dr. Roy Spencer, questions from the solar science community that we can answer, and pre-earthquake signals. Let's start with the last 24 hours on our star. There are several active regions releasing C-class flares and coronal jets, and it looks like there are more incoming. The mini-cycle uptick on the sun is due to begin this month, and we are about to have the disk peppered with sunspots. Solar watch is high. But let's go to the ground next. Oklahoma earthquake 5.1 felt across the state, certainly above average for the area. As most earthquakes do, it interacted with the atmospheric electricity, showing up on radar as the energetic release excited the global electric circuit and the vapor seen on radar. So far, I can't find much in the way of damage reports. Hopefully, it stays that way. Folks, up next, we've got the James Webb shots of the outer planets. This compilation was made covering Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Highlighted in there are the infrared cameras on the satellite. Unique looks at the gas spheres of our system. Link to that data file is below. Up next, we've got Dr. Roy Spencer, and this will hit hard, especially for those who read his article last week. There is an enormous difference between the models, the ground observations, and the satellite observations. The actual observations are the blue and gray bars, and the red ones are the climate models. As you can see, there is quite the disparity there, and it doesn't even factor in the urban heat island effect. Cool one up next where the best solar scientists are beginning to wonder what makes the difference between fast rising and slow rising solar flares. They plan to use a new catalog of the x-ray data to figure it out, and if any happen to be watching, I suggest they look at the difference between isolated sunspot flares and the ones resulting from when filaments release nearby to the active region, ergo, where the flare fully precedes the CME versus the CEMEs that release at the start of the flare, but the flare peak hasn't hit yet when that plasma releases. Lastly, folks, we've got two pre-earthquake signal papers. Both are in the rarer signal catalog of the ULF waves. We have seen nearly every electromagnetic means of observation signal the quakes before they occur with major concurrent signals like we saw with the radar signal in the wake of the Oklahoma quake. Well over a thousand papers on those pre-earthquake signals now. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.